And let me tell you something. You know you truly have been in the presence of God. When number one, transformation begins to take place. When God begins to shift things in our character. Come on, somebody. It begins to shift things in our mind and in our thoughts. And it begins to transform us. Be he transformed by the renewing of your mind because you know you have met with God when God begins to shift things in your heart. Come on. He begins to shift things in your thinking. He begins to shift things. Come on. Because you know, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And whatever is in the heart is going to begin to show out inward, outwardly. It's going to begin to show outwardly. Come on. Weaknesses will begin to show in the presence of God. How many, how many know what I'm talking about? Feelings, your feelings will begin to be revealed and exposed in the presence of God. Our personality will begin to be exposed in the presence of God. This is why religious movements are dangerous. I don't need a religious movement. Come on. I need it. Even if I'm by myself, I need God to interrupt my character. Shift those character flaws in me. Shift those feelings of whatever it may be, giving up or quitting or throwing in the towel or, or, or quitting on your marriage or, or giving up for your kids, whatever it may be. Come on, somebody. There is a place called intimacy with God. And that when we get into his presence, my God, God begins to shift those things. He begins to change our temperament. Who knows about that? Our temperament, when our temperament is off, God begins to, come on, shift our temperament. And he begins to temper our temperament. Lord, have mercy. God, y'all ain't hearing me. God begins to temper our temperament. Because sometimes we act like we got it all together. And, and the doctor, he says, you know, you were able to read the first line. Read for, read line one for me. Z. H P here. Spiritual assessment going on now. So Dabokunda. So you go now and you say now uh J T for whatever reason now you're slower than you were before. You're not able now to, don't, don't forget about the third line. Don't even, don't even think about line three. Why? You can't even hardly see line two. So you can't, you definitely can't see line three. So now God is God. What if now God does an assessment of your walk with him and he assesses and see, let's see, you think you're real close to me? You think you're deep, huh, Roger? Huh? You think you're where you need to be? Huh? Do you really think? Let's do an assessment. My God, when we read scripture, oh, my God, we have already begun. I feel the presence of the Lord. When we begin to read scripture and study the word of God and how God speaks to the church at Ephesus in the book of Revelation. The Bible is clear. This church had it together. And I want to let you know that the seven churches that we see in the book of Revelation is the very condition of every church, every current church in today's society. Yes, we see the Bible says in, in Revelation 2, verse 2, he says, I know your deeds. Revelations 2, verse 2, I know your deeds and your toil and your patient endurance. Yes, we've been patient and enduring. Lord, have mercy. And that you cannot tolerate those who are evil. My God. So now we, the body of Christ, they don't, they're not tolerating evil. Uh, you're not tolerating evil. You have, you have patient endurance. And the Bible says, and have tested and critically appraised those who call themselves apostles 
and in fact are not and have found them to be liars and imposters. So the church has found these false apostles in contempt and says, you are not true apostles. And Jesus is speaking now. Let's continue this assessment. I know that you who believe are enduring patiently and are bearing up for my name's sake, my God, <clears throat> and that you have not grown weary, excuse me, of being weary. You have not grown weary of being faithful to the truth. Is that not the truth? My God, we can all say we have not grown weary of the truth. We're strong in our faith. We're strong in patience. My God, we stood the test of time and we feel as though we've got it together. My God, and we've reached and we've attained. But remember, Dr. G just now is assessing where you are. Just like a doctor assesses where your eyesight is. Read line one and you were able to read line one, Z, T, P. Read line two, the letters become smaller and you hardly can read line two. Come on. Okay. Then he says, read line three, but line, re four, line three, you were able to read line three last year, but now this year you're having a problem reading line three. Why? Because there's so much, it's not that the letters have changed. Oh my God. It's that there's what? Your eyesight has changed. Your our vision has changed. Come on. And so now we are now in an assessment of our walk with God. And here God, Jesus, is now exposing the reality of their heart and what is really going on. And he says, yes, you've been patient and enduring. You've been, you stood the test of time and, and, and uh, you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake and that you have grown, you have not grown weary of being faithful to the truth. But verse four, verse four, remember when we go to the doctor, Glory be to God. It is not to us, it is to assess where our health really is. It is not to assess where we think our health is. <laughs> I hope you catch this. Please catch this. This word may seem simple, but it's very deep. So it's not simple. Listen now. So now we go, Jesus is speaking, and he says, four. You've done all these things. I love it. But verse four says, but I have this charge against you. That you have left your first love. Lord, have mercy. You have lost the depth of love that you first had for me. In other words, I'm no longer on your priority list. I'm on your priority list, excuse me, but I'm not number one on your priority list. Let me tell you something, saints of God. Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus is doing an assessment of the body of Christ. And let me tell you something. A lot of people are going to go before Jesus in this season and say, I am this and full of pride and I'm that. But Jesus is going to say, but I have this against you. And what does he say? He says, I have this against you. You have left your first love. You have lost the depth of love that you first had for me. So remember the heights from which you have fallen. Remember the heights from which you have fallen. Now, this is something, saints of God. Who would ever think if I'm holding my faith strong and I, my faith is in joy, and I can point out false prophets and false apostles. And we see this in this season where everybody's trying to expose that person and expose that person and expose that person. And they fail to look at themselves. Oh, my God. They fail to look at what's going on inside their own heart. Oh, my God. They're pointing the finger at pastor, but will not say, what's going on with you? Come on, I can't assess everybody and not assess myself. Come on, the worst thing you could do is being in a, be in a relationship and always pointing the finger. No, what am I doing that is what? Causing a problem. 
Could it possibly be me? <laughs> so now remember now, in a true assessment, when you go to the boss and he gives you your yearly uh, assessment, come on, he's, got, he's not going to lie. You're an expert. And look what they look what they do. The first thing they do is tell you all the good things that you that you did, just like Jesus did, <laughs> don't they? Girl, you you did a good job on that project last month. Oh, John, you did excellent. Oh my God, Minister Chana, you did excellent with the patient. The patient did not complain. Oh my God, Doctor Cindy, awesome job, awesome job, Pastor D. Oh my God. We just love how you critiqued that particular thing. And we just, they give you the pretty stuff at first. But then, but there's that but. That but. And I believe the body of Christ now is going to experience Jesus coming with a rebuttal and saying, I think you think you've reached, you think. You reach you think you reach a pinnacle in God. You think you're all that in a bag of chips. You got a whole bunch of, you got a big fan page now. You're a big influencer now. You're making money now. You bought the house now. But he says, the Bible says, but I have this charge against you, the Amplified Virgin says, that you have left. You have walked away. And let's be real. When the doctor tells us the truth, it's hard. Woo! It's hard. Doctor says, oh, you're doing good with your sugar levels, uh, but your pressure now, I, I don't know. What's going on there? What's going on? And you're like, wait a minute. I, I've done everything I thought I could to handle that, but... That doesn't matter. It's now a true assessment of what's going on within your heart. Come on, somebody. Those weak areas, my temperament, my emotions, come on. My personality is going to be exposed in the presence of God. My feelings are going to be exposed in the presence of God. Let me tell you something. If you really been in the presence of God, God is going to expose everything wrong in order to make it right. God doesn't expose us just to expose us. And there's a lot of things I can say I may have been holding on to. Come on, holding on to. And you say, doctor, yes, I've been eating right, but you didn't tell him about that donut. I've been eating right. I haven't been telling about that ice cream you've been sneaking on the side. Come on, somebody. And you're like, yeah, I can oblivion. How is that possible, doctor? But you didn't tell them about that Frito chips you ate the other day. That's causing fluctuation in the health. And one thing about Jesus, Jesus, he doesn't need to, to he doesn't even need to access anything. He just exposes us. Come on, somebody. You did have those Cheetos. Come on. You still have unforgiveness in your heart. Oh, my God. You know, you know, you know, you know, you're questioning what's going on. I thought I forgave the person. But then when you saw the person in person, when they walked past you, come on, you felt something triggering in your heart. Click, 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 click. Trigger, 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 trigger. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this word, but I'm telling you right now, this ain't Pastor Roger, y'all. This is a divine assessment. And if you call yourself a believer, if you say you're a child of God, you are going to be exposed in this season. Let me tell you, I'm warning you now. So he says now, Jesus didn't say, I need you to, oh, go back now and um, try to work it out. Get closer to me because you lost your first love. You know what he says? Go, he didn't say, go read your Bible. Go read your Bible. Go read more scripture. He didn't say, no, go, go pray more. No, go fast a little bit more. He said, no, repent. Shut up. Now that now is mind blowing. Because many of us will say, repent for what? I don't have the time. Huh. I don't have the schedule. My schedule has changed. 
Of course, the Lord will be understanding. He will understand that I'm not having him on my number. He's not number one on my priority list now. No, but Jesus is saying, no, one must now repent. Because guess what? If my love for the Lord Jesus is gone, my love for people is going to be gone too. And if there's anything the church has lost, is number one, it's love for Jesus. And number two, it's, it's love for people. I need you to repent for that because guess what? How can you put me second when I wake you up every morning? How can you put me second when I'm the one that kept you in your mind? You would have lost your mind, but I kept your mind going. I kept you emotionally stable. How could I not be put first? <laughs> oh my God. How can you not put me as number one priority? And if you're saying in your mind, but look, I give God more than enough. I, I'm already giving God enough time. We ought to repent for that because we know that's not true. Because whatever I really want to do, I'm going to do it. And whatever I'm willing to make the time for, I'm going to make the time for it. Somebody say hallelujah. So let's pray right now. Lord, I repent for not putting you number one. Come on, take this seriously. I, I, I repent. I'm not putting you as number one priority. I'm putting Facebook first. Oh, my double. I'm putting YouTube first. Come on, somebody. I'm putting people and friends first. I'm calling people first. Lord, have mercy. I'm working on this, number one, and I gotta have to do that second, and I have to do that third. And Jesus is at the bottom of the list, and Jesus is saying to the church, remember the heights from which you have fallen and repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, your sinful behavior, seek God's will and do the works you did at first when you first knew me. And look what he says, otherwise I will visit you and remove your lampstand. The church, its power, its ability, its impact, from its place, unless we repent. Remember what we said, we're about to pray. But remember, understand that the secret place, our secret position is not going to happen here corporately. A secret place is only done in private. God exposes himself to us. Hallelujah. When we get to, into an intimate place, a private place, a secret closet, hallelujah, where we seek the Lord, glory be to God, and cry out to him and seek his face. Oh, hallelujah, for surely God is doing an assessment. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. He does not lie. We say in the name of Jesus, everything that's hindering the people of God from going deeper into a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I command every demonic assignment. That's against every person who truly desires a deeper walk with the Lord Jesus. I command it to leave. I bind up every plan of the enemy. I bind you, Satan, in the north. I bind you in the south. I bind you in the east and in the west. I shut down every plan of the Satapoko. We say in the name of Jesus, there will be no excuses, no more excuses, no more excuses to pray, no more, no more excuses to seek the face of God, no more excuses, oh, to say I surrender, no more excuses that will say, oh, I don't have the time, I'm too busy now, I don't have the time, oh, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, oh, the 
devil is a liar. We say in the name of Jesus, the Lord is drawing us closer. Closer. And for those of you who may be going through a rough time and a rough season, let me tell you something. I've been there many times. And let me tell you, throughout life, we will go through these dry seasons. It is not there to kill you. Understand that John, hallelujah, when he was on the Isle of Patmos, the island of Patmos, it was not a paradise. It was not an island of paradise. Come on, somebody. It was not fantasy island. It was a deserted, dry place. And let me tell you something. I don't know why, but this is how God sets it up. Moses found God in the desert. So I don't know why, but anytime there's a dry season, maybe in your finances, maybe in your career, maybe in your future, there's something that may be dry and it's not going according to plan. But let me tell you something. It is a divine setup. It is it is a divine supernatural setup because every time there's a dry season, we see it with John. We see it with the apostle John. We see it with Moses. Come on, somebody. We see it with Ezekiel. Come on. We see it with Daniel. My God. Every time there was something not right, it was an opportunity to, to experience God. And let me tell you something. Worship will be birth and revelations will be revealed in that dry place. And if you're not in a dry place right now, to God be the glory. It's a wonderful thing. But anytime when we think about dry places, I'm, not talk, I'm talking about something that is not right at the moment in your life. There's something that you are having sleepless nights about. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, somebody. There is something that you're not sleeping. Come on. You're not sleeping. You're not sleeping. Why? Because it's always on your mind. That is the thing that God is going to allow uh, us to get closer to him. For when we get closer to him, boom, we're going to get the revelation. We're going to get the wisdom that we need from the Lord in order to do what we need to do next. Come on, somebody. And worship and revelation will be birthed in that place. I say in the name of the Lord Jesus, revelations will be, will be birthed. Eyes will be opened up. Things that God is trying to show us will be revealed. It will be exposed. Things that God is trying to tell us. If there's any blockage in our ears, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. For I say in this season and in this time, hallelujah, your ears, our ears will be open to hear thus saith the Lord in this season. And when we hear thus saith the Lord, we will do thus saith the Lord. For surely, let me tell you something, there are people who are laughing at us and saying you will not make it. You will not come through. You will not come out of it. But the devil is a liar. I declare you are, you are already out of it in the name of Jesus. And when God speaks, you will do what he tells you to do. My God, lift your hands and just worship him right now. Just glorify him. My God, if you're not seen, put an emoji on, on the text. Do something. My God, because the presence of the Lord is here. My God, I don't care about anybody's feelings. If you don't like me, that's all right. I'm not here to pamper your feelings. I'm here to say, thus saith the Lord. And if you don't like it, I'm too bad. My God, you will not shift to this place of intimacy. This is, for, this is for a people, a remnant of individuals oh, who wants a greater walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want it, now is your time to experience it. Lift your hands and worship him. This la-la land foolishness, those days are over. 
Hallelujah. It is time for the church to arise and wake up. And I say in the name of Jesus, arise. Wake up in the name of Jesus. Come out of your emotional slumber. Come out of that demonic slumber in the name of the Lord Jesus and arise and be what God is calling you to be in the name of Jesus. Oh my God, I give you the glory. I give you the honor. I give you the praise because you are worthy to be praised and there is no one like you, Jesus. Just worship him right now. Just magnify him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 91. Hallelujah. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place. My God, we want to pray about dwelling. Hallelujah. We have not been dwelling. Woo! My God, the devil don't like this. But oh, my God, you better check your heart. If your heart is fighting this word, you better go before God. My God, because God is speaking. My God, he that dwelleth. Hallelujah. In the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Glory be to God. God is saying now is the time more than ever where we must dwell in the secret place. We must live there and we must allow anyone to move us from that position. Even your own family members, don't allow them. Friends, enemies, come on somebody. Don't allow anyone to move you from that secret place. Glory be to God. Because when we dwell in the secret place, we're in the secret closet, Hallelujah. My God, God is going to reward us openly. Glory be to God. He will reward us openly. How many of you want rewards? God, my God. Hallelujah. How many want God to reward you? Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Just lift your hands and worship him. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. We won't be in the category in closing. Those who speak well of me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. The gift of the Spirit is speaking in tongues, but the fruit of the Spirit is controlling your tongue. <laughs> A lot of us, we mastered, we got the gift real good. But know this, the Bible says you shall know them by their gift. It didn't say you shall know them by their gift. <laughs> you shall know them by their fruit. And what is the fruit of the spirit is? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, temperance, meekness. Come on, long-suffering. God doesn't just want you to have the gift. Because the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. You can go to hell straight with the gift. But will we allow the fruit to transform us? Will we allow the fruit, hallelujah, to bring us to a deeper place of intimacy with God? Because let me tell you, oh, I'm going to say it again because somebody needs to hear this and I'm going to close. Oh, yes, the, 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 the gift of the Spirit allows you to speak in tongues, but the fruit of the Spirit will cause you to hold your tongue and say, shut up. <laughs> Even when you want to say something, hold your peace and let me fight your battle. 